Good afternoon and morning, everybody, and welcome back to another weather forecast here by Age of the Forecast. This is going to be another upload up to here on the major severe weather outbreak likely here throughout many areas in the South Central and also including areas of the lower Mississippi Valley Basin. So again, this is going to definitely going to be seeing a really good threat for severe weather, especially Wednesday. Wednesday is the biggest threat for severe weather. I Actually, the SPC has really yet to put a risk there. I don't know exactly why. Uh, but again, we're going to start seeing the severe weather starting off on Tuesday. And then by Wednesday, everything starts to ramp up. We're going to start seeing these bands uh, getting a lot stronger. We're going to be seeing this Gulf moisture and instability as well. And even going to be seeing this wind shear strengthening by Wednesday. So it looks like Wednesday is definitely going to be that area of focus here. I made new maps, and there's major new updates on the radars, SPC outlook, and a lot more. So if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe if you are new. I hope, uh, hopefully, I can have another upload later this afternoon on this if there's any major updates on uh, really anything that could impact whether it's going to be bad or not. And again, it, we can't exactly say it's going to be a tornado outbreak still uh, three days away. So we can't exactly say it's going to be a tornado outbreak or sorry, two days away. Uh, but it's very likely you can definitely be seeing some very strong tornadoes in some of these areas in Arkansas, Mississippi, uh, Oklahoma, once again, and all of that. So again, also be sure to share the channel to any friends or family that you think will also love my daily weather forecast or that you think will need this information to get prepared for any severe weather impacts. Without further ado, let's get this video. So this is my new map I made earlier, uh, earlier uh, this morning here. So this is all updated. As you can tell, it's a bit different compared to my other map. So because it looks like we have a bit of now a bit more of a defined location or we're getting a bit closer to exactly where we're going to be seeing mainly this worst of your weather threat again we will be seeing also very strong severe weather out there into the midwest that is also a threat that's going to be very widespread from the midwest all the way to the gulf coast but this is going to be the main area of focus and it's going to be really the main focus is late tuesday very late Tuesday, like in the evening hours in Texas, Oklahoma, and parts of Kansas. And then by Wednesday, these bands just completely develop into monster st uh, systems, possibly really strong linear bands. So in the light, uh, in the light red, on the uh, lighter sh uh, shade of red, that's where we have that severe weather risk. And that's going to be seen where we have that uh, really lowest risk for extremely strong severe weather, um, just based on all the radars. Uh, and just on also all the other things like uh, such as the Cape values, also just taking in, in hand looking at the wind shear and all of that. Of course, these maps will likely change a lot in the next coming days. This is not exactly 100% accurate as of right now. As we obviously get maybe into tomorrow, we're going to have a lot more accurate maps. But this is what we're seeing again areas in Oklahoma City, Dallas, Waco, Monroe. Uh, all the way to St. Louis, we can have a severe weather risk again. They're going to be seeing some very strong bands again. Hail threat's going to be very, very widespread as we've been seeing the past week or so. Hail threat has been the primary threat for almost ed every severe weather outbreak we've seen in the past week. And it's looking like we're going to be seeing the severe, uh, this hail threat even uh, even a bit more widespread now all the way into areas like Tennessee, Kentucky. Again, it's going to be uh, from Tuesday, Wednesday. So this is not just one day. It's going to be really a range of two days. So that's why it's going to be so widespread. And then all the way into the southern Illinois, parts of far southern Indiana, we can be seeing that risk for some very strong severe weather bands, likely cause damaging winds, straight line winds, really strong amount of maybe debris closer and more into the south central. As we're not getting that second shade of red, that's where we have the, the really based on everything we're looking at in this video. That's basically what we're seeing here for the, maybe possibly seeing the worst of the severe weather. Not necessarily mean you're going to be exactly seeing maybe the biggest threat for tornadoes, for example. Let's just say you're definitely be getting hit really hard by these bands and maybe possibly getting hit a lot harder because these areas in maybe more closer to Dallas and Oklahoma City, those bands will be really affecting you by early late Tuesday, early Wednesday. Those bands won't really be developing much until we have that amount of moisture and overday heating later into Wednesday strengthening, which is going to also, again, strengthen this bands as they move eastward, which is why we have that now into Mississippi, parts of Tennessee, areas into southeastern Louisiana, uh, sorry, sorry, southeastern Missouri, parts of far northern uh, Louisiana, and even the tips of Oklahoma and Texas. So this is my map. Again, Little Rock, Poplar Bluff, Memphis, uh, Texarkana, and very close to Monroe is where you have that very big risk for severe weather. Now let's get all into the maps and all of these models. So this is now the day three outlook here for the severe weather. We have it up to a slight risk, which was expected since we only had we only had a fifteen percent chance on this. Uh, I really don't know exactly what's happening in SBC here because the biggest day of severe weather is Wednesday, and we don't really see these bands arriving in the South Central. We have this risk until 
like really close into around midnight so there's really no point i really don't know exactly why because even on day four they have low risk at this point they should have up to 15 percent to 30 percent chance i actually don't exactly know what's going on i don't know if they just put in the wrong day or anything but this is what we have right now so on day three here we have this marginal slight risk i think this might actually be for tuesday even though day three is actually uh sorry for wednesday even though day three is Tuesday, I don't know exactly why, but this would be really what we'll be seeing most likely for two, uh, for Wednesday, except the light, the slight risk should be extended a bit more. But again, we only have a slight risk, which is actually uh, somewhat good compared to the past outbreaks. Again, we've been seeing level threes and fours, and almost on the urge of seeing a level five some of these outbreaks. So this is a bit of a step down, but again, we're going to be seeing a fairly decent chance for tornadoes because even if you're in a slight risk, it's still a very decent chance for tornadoes, and especially hail will definitely cause a lot of damaging. Uh, damaging on any objects or anything so definitely still not really a happy thing to see slight risk in these exact same areas uh but it's just a step down which is a bit of a good sign and maybe seeing the severe weather kind of dying down a little bit but in this yellow again this is our highest risk for severe weather as of right now uh there's it's not really uh maybe very likely to see an enhanced risk be extended but again there it, things can happen but here in this yellow, we have that area of main uh, main area focus for areas into northeastern Texas, parts of northern uh, northern Louisiana, much of Arkansas, much of western Oklahoma, uh, south uh, eastern uh, Kansas, and then all the way up into the border with Illinois and Iowa there with in far northern Missouri. So that's what we see our based on just on the probability of best a uh, chance for, again possibly seeing damaging winds, large hail and tornadoes. And again, the probability outlook is still only a 15% chance here. And the Wi-Fi was running actually a bit slow. Uh, but now we're gonna be looking out here into the uh, the model here for the uh, bulk shear. So this can be seen, basically we're gonna be looking at the amount of shear. Uh, we're gonna be seeing these exact areas really. We're definitely be seeing a ton of shear, uh, wind shear coming in by Wednesday. Again, it's not necessarily, not like an impressive amount of shear, but again, the most amount of shear will be coming on Wednesday. Not gonna be seeing really much shear whatsoever on Tuesday which is exactly why we're not going to be seeing that severe weather risk necessarily that big of a threat for Tuesday. And that's why the severe weather just kind of arrive on late Tuesday because that's when that shear starts to arrive. And then by Wednesday, we'll see a lot more shear again coming in now and from the central plains into the uh, Dakotas. So that's when we see that severe weather risk for some of the areas. And I guess not impressive, but around 70 knots there. And as we now continue to move on closer, more into Wednesday, this does uh, this shear does now strengthen, of course. This is going to be that area of focus where we're seeing the most amount of shear, which is why we're going to be seeing severe weather threat in these areas. So here we have it coming down from the northerly winds. Also going to be seeing that moisture coming up from the Gulf. Also going to bring in that uh, the, the southerly winds. So this is definitely going to be a big threat for uh, wind shear. Again, it's not necessarily impressive, anything, but we're going to get around 80 knots in these areas. And then by win or by Thursday morning, this shear does uh, move now more to the southeast. So that will be um, bringing in a smaller threat for severe weather in some of these areas like Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, even Tennessee. You guys will possibly have some potential for some strong severe weather bands. Not uh, a really good chance of right now for tornadoes. Uh, maybe some smaller sized hail for the southeast, but it's not looking like the southeast will get hit hard at all. And then these stronger bands will be moving to the Carolinas here. If that can actually go back again and see that shear uh, as well weakening by Friday. So definitely not going to be much of... The biggest day for shear is going to be really Wednesday. But even on Wednesday, the shear isn't impressive or major. But we're still seeing a decent amount of shear, uh, which is what we need uh, to bring instability. Now, as we get now into the uh, radar here for pivotal weather, the GFS model. Here we have, again, these bands developing here by late Tuesday. These bands will be developed, uh, really, the, the origin of these bands will be in the Midwest here from Minnesota and Ohio, or Minnesota and Wisconsin. Like I said, we are going to be seeing severe weather for some strong bands all the way into the Midwest, but it won't be as uh, as high of a threat for severe weather bands as uh, producing tornadic uh, thunderstorms uh, like the South Central. Uh, but again, we're just going to be focusing as well. We're still going to be, we can't roll out the threat for Wisconsin, Illinois, and uh, again, Minnesota. We're still going to be focusing on that, but our main area of where we'll be seeing the worst severe weather is to be in the South Central as we now get to Wednesday morning. Like I said, these bands are barely gonna be arriving by Tuesday, so I don't exactly know what the SVC is. I don't know if something happened, a glitch, I really don't know. But again, this, by Wednesday, this amount of moisture here, the ice bars do, uh, of course, get a lot closer in the Gulf. Gonna be seeing a lot of uh, humidity, moisture as we get into Wednesday. Also gonna be seeing some warmer temperatures here. 
Definitely music again these very strong bands now for parts of central Arkansas, very powerful band as well for southeastern Missouri and also in the tip of northeastern Texas near Texarkana. You guys as well are gonna be seeing quite the strong bands and much of um not really general at all of western Oklahoma is gonna be seeing that huge, huge threat, but it's gonna be wind down or uh, kind of winded down to southeastern Oklahoma and then by later Wednesday these bands do continue now to be a lot more uh, become a lot more widespread here and I don't know why my epic pen just uh just glitched but again like I said we're gonna be seeing that even severe weather threat all the way all the way into the uh, far western Kentucky so this is not just a Texas Oklahoma Louisiana Arkansas system this could also be again Kansas Missouri Illinois all the way to Wisconsin and we're going to be seeing very strong bands developing for far southern Illinois and in western Kentucky, even far southern south, uh, western Indiana. That's exactly why I had that second layer of red in these areas. And then, again, continuing to see these powerful bands. Once again, for western Tennessee, areas into north central Miss Mississippi, northern uh, uh, Louisiana, and, and continue to see quite the stronger bands now, possibly some smaller uh, some smaller bands that are likely to be multi uh, multiple uh, systems, multi celled and possibly tornadic in areas in northeastern Texas again. For near Tyler, and then that severe weather threat does uh, kind of wind down by Wednesday. These some of these bands kind of diminish and kind of become a lot weaker. So we we'll definitely see these bands continue again to produce very heavy rain, flash flooding threats, and uh, again possibly smaller sized hail in the Ohio Valley. And again, definitely not going to see a huge severe weather threat for even Alabama, Georgia. These bands would be very small, just scattered. Maybe rain showers, thunderstorms at most, and maybe seeing just the heavier the rain in northern Georgia, parts of the Carolinas. And then again, that would possibly move into Pennsylvania. And then maybe seeing a little bit of a threat for severe weather now in the mid-Atlantic. That, that shouldn't be major as well. Uh, again, it's not looking like we're going to be seeing an enhanced risk in some of these areas or moderate risk. But we're still going to be seeing widespread severe weather developing in the Dakotas. Then moving to the Midwest. Then moving down to the South Central. And then now moving all the way to the mid-Atlantic. So definitely a very widespread threat though. Um, as we now move again now into the GFS model here. For the year, uh, for the tropical tip pits again. Let's actually just wait for this thing to actually uh, load all the way up. So I'm actually have to, I'm actually gonna have to go back to that later because again, uh, my I'm having a couple of Wi-Fi issues. I actually don't know exactly why Wi-Fi is going on and off. Uh, this is it's now pro this is these tabs are working because I just refreshed these. These are working, but the the normal GFS model is not working for some reason. It's not like reloading or anything. I don't know exactly why, but I'll get to that once I finish with the other tabs and then I'll go straight back to that hoping uh, the Wi-Fi is good there. But again, here we're now going to be looking at the tropical tippets and the N3KM model. Again, we're actually getting very close to the point where we can be looking at uh, these detailed radar here as again, we are getting closer and closer to the severe weather. So Again, it's going to be the end of Tuesday. Like I said, look at this. We're not seeing any severe weather threat whatsoever, really whatsoever, on Tuesday. And if if we when we are, it's going to be really like Tuesday, like at maybe eleven o'clock or like ten o'clock in some of these areas. And again, we're seeing more of a threat for the Illinois areas and Missouri for a widespread Tuesday threat than even the South Central. But again, here we have this low pressure system. Here we have this moisture coming in from the Gulf. It's not necessarily strong whatsoever. Again. Uh, the ice bars are really far apart. Definitely not going to be seeing a whole ton of a uh, whole big stream of severe weather or sorry, not a whole stream of humidity or any moisture moving at really much at whatsoever. But here we have the strong band developing now to Oklahoma. That's going to be really Tuesday night and to now Wednesday. Uh, now this is Wednesday now, uh, really actually Wednesday 1 a.m. Eastern time, but 12 a.m. Central time. So again, like I said, these are bands are literally happening right before midnight. And I don't know exactly why we have slight risk for Tuesday. I think that the, the one, I think that they just switched the days on accident. Because what we see for day three, which is Tuesday, should be for Wednesday. Uh, but here we have these very strong bands very early Wednesday morning. So even on Tuesday night, you're definitely going to be areas in Oklahoma. Uh, you guys are definitely going to have to be on the lookout. So by Tuesday night... You're going to maybe have want to have a plan because we're going to be seeing very powerful bands like literally right in the middle of the night, like just around 12 a.m. Uh, to all the way to 5 a.m. as these bands continue to move on into now going to be heading towards the southwestern areas of, uh, or sorry, southeastern parts of Oklahoma in northeastern Oklahoma or Texas. So that's going to be areas that are going to be affected later, closer into the morning, closer to sunrise. But this is definitely still a potential for tornadoes and hail. So even if we're not going to be seeing a threat necessarily for Tuesday, by Tuesday night, you're going to maybe want to sleep in the basement or be prepared to have some really strong severe weather that could be tornadic. So definitely still going to take some caution. 
Now we're looking at the joules per kilogram, which is the again the amount of energy we're gonna be seeing uh, behind the cells and behind the uh, atmosphere. Really. Just basically the amount of energy we're gonna be seeing to potentially create a severe weather. So it's gonna be really really low this amount of energy, this flow. Not really um, a lot of flow from the Gulf on Tuesday, but by Wednesday that flow does strengthen again. Basically, we've seen the most amount of energy coming in to the areas of the uh, eastern coast of Texas. We're going to be seeing some really low numbers, really not going to be impressive, but we're still going to be seeing around 2,300 bits per kilogram, widespread 2,200 to 2,400. As we now move more into now Tuesday night, this is when the energy really now starts to ramp up a little bit now as we get into Tuesday night. That's going to be now the energy, and this is exactly why we will see these storms develop in the middle of Oklahoma by Tuesday night, because that's when the energy really starts to flow in. So that's why if this flow were to happen on a Tuesday morning, that is when we'll definitely have to have that slight risk for Tuesday. Uh, but it's going to be coming in too late, but we're still going to be seeing a whole ton of energy. We're going to be seeing around, really a maximum around 4,000 joules per kilogram. That's quite a lot of energy that's going to be for the areas in Central Texas near Austin, uh, right here near the Austin area. And we'll be seeing some mid 3000s to some low 3000s for much of Texas. Then we'll see these numbers become a lot higher and also a lot more widespread now getting to Louisiana, Arkansas, and here's now Oklahoma getting quite the high numbers. We're going to be seeing now around 2,400 dollars per kilogram. That is not a lot of energy really, but definitely for Texas, we're going to be seeing a ton of energy by Wednesday morning. That is why we're definitely going to be seeing these very strong bands really moving these areas. This is going to be the main area of focus, but again, with this, with the amount of energy. So this is basically where we have the best chance for seeing the really strong severe weather, of course, for the South Central. But we can definitely see some spot-up systems throughout much of Texas outside this main area uh, with, the, with the amount of energy in the atmosphere and all this. We can definitely see some spawn-up systems uh, with the amount of energy. We're going to be close, uh, really nearing 5,000 joules per kilogram. Then that Wednesday night, we start to see these amount of numbers really go down uh, significantly. Now we're we'll just taking a look at the winds and the speed uh, and knots and the a bit uh, for surface uh, winds. So this is not going to be higher in the atmosphere. This is actually be for the surface uh, surface winds. So by Tuesday we're going to be seeing these winds developing and getting a lot stronger now. When it comes, to, as you can tell, you're going to be seeing this northwesterly winds coming in. This is gonna, again, you're going to see that stream. That's where you see that jet stream now going to come in from the Gulf. Uh, sorry, come in from the uh, Pacific Northwest and uh, and then dip like that. That's going to be the winds that are going to be coming in with this. Again, the wind shear as well. And here you have this Gulf moisture flow as well, which is a, where we're going to have the area of focus right here. We're going to be seeing around 40 knots. Uh, sorry, about around 30 knots. So maybe uh, nearing 34 knots in some of these areas and the Dakotas. And then the wind does die down by Wednesday. But by later Wednesday, by later Wednesday in the night, again, the stream will uh, strengthen uh, from the north. And then seeing this Gulf as well strengthen that's going to be seeing some stronger winds for texas and then some stronger winds as well for the midwest so this is where we have this area of focus the midwest and of course the south central winds won't be uh, really incredibly powerful uh just in general but we're as these storms do develop we're gonna be seeing straight line winds which will be up to 40 knots uh so hope you guys enjoyed the video and that let me actually go ahead and check out that gfs has reloaded okay perfect so it looks like now it is working so it looks like the wi-fi is now really good uh, for now this but I actually just need exactly this to reload but as we now get I actually need one little area to actually reload so I actually know why it wasn't working it's because it was reloading uh, and it was still showing it for some reason but here we have now really now this is ex now really fresh new data here so this is even this is actually kind of worked out so we're even seeing now a uh, perfect new data so again by Tuesday we are gonna be, we are gonna be seeing these storms developing here in the Midwest that should be seeing our primary threat. We're going to be seeing the strong, uh, severe weather for Minnesota, Wisconsin. As you can tell, by Tuesday, we're going to be seeing scatter systems, again, for Oklahoma. But that's not including the areas we have at risk for Louisiana, Arkansas, and Texas. Again, it seems scattered. These are going to be some really scattered things. Where really, the stronger will be, the strongest storms will be, uh, based on this, going to be in Minnesota and Wisconsin. As we now get the next 60 hours by Wednesday morning, now you see a huge change here with the low-pressure system developing here with uh, now the moisture it's going to be really strengthening in the gulf isobars are a lot closer look at this it's a huge significant difference not really much energy uh, not a whole uh strong uh, not a strong stream and then it completely changes now we're seeing very strong amounts of stream here a lot of humidity coming in now spilling out to texas and louisiana 
going to be seeing some very strong producing systems down for Oklahoma, Minnesota, oh, sorry, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri. And then by Wednesday, again, we have these really strong man power. These are going to be some very powerful bands now moving into the areas now into the, uh, as well, and now moving into the areas of the uh, Ozarks, Missouri, South Central. You guys are definitely going to be hitting really hard. As you can tell, this is where we have these, uh, my, the second shade the second shade of gr uh, red in these areas. Very powerful, though, all the way from northeastern Texas to far southern Indiana. We're going to be seeing that really strong severe weather threat. And then that's now moved, that does now move to the southeast. As these bands do weaken, uh, it will move east. So these bands will be arriving in Georgia, Alabama, especially the Ohio Valley and Tennessee Valley. You guys will probably get hit the hardest. Again, these are going to be some really scarce systems. Again, uh, once you get to the NAN 3 cam model, these are going to be really small uh, bands. And again, may maybe by Thursday, we may maybe see another slight risk issue for the Mid-Atlantic. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I do apologize for all the uh, Wi-Fi issues and I had to reload. Even though it didn't really impact you because I it was really impacting me, but whatever. Uh, but again, please subscribe if you are new to the channel. Let's really try to get to 2,180 subscribers by the end of today. It really, really will mean a lot to me, guys, uh, as I'm trying to put a lot more effort into the severe weather forecast for you guys. I most likely will have another video out. I will have definitely another video out. I just don't know exactly if it will be on the, se on the severe weather. It might be on the major heat front or the major warm fronts, of course, in the uh, southwest. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and stay safe.